I'm looking at a video called The Hypocrisy of Atheists. Pretty common accusation, usually based on straw men or just not backed up that well, but maybe this one's better. We'll see. Greetings, everyone. Salutations, good fellow. Today I have that problem that guys sometimes have. Oh, don't worry, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Happens to the best of us. Or I can't get one piece of my hair to just stay down no matter what I do to it. Oh. Is that a guy thing? I didn't know that was a thing with us. Although granted, I haven't taken this hat off in a really long time. So it looks a bit odd. But your whole head looks like that. I don't really get what the problem is. You could just snip it off. The tuft, I mean, not your head. I don't know if that'd give you a bald spot or what, but maybe that's like a fashion statement. But I want to discuss today just one thing in relation to atheism. I'm honestly really happy to hear that. These kind of videos have a tendency to wander. Keeping it simple seems like a good policy. This whole video isn't going to be me giving a list of reasons why I think atheism doesn't make sense. It's going to be one particular aspect that I want to talk about where I feel that atheists want to both have their cake and eat it. Yeah, again, I totally approve. Get in, make your point, get out. Neither of us want to be here all day. I mean, I know your part's already done. You're probably off having a grand old time already, and I'm stuck here doing this. Maybe you've already figured out the hair tuft situation and my advice wasn't even needed. That'd feel bad. I liked feeling useful. And that is the following. All right, okay, the, uh, the, the football kick is coming, so I'm gonna guard the net. Football has a net, right? Is that an accurate metaphor? If you are an atheist... I am. Unlike a believer... I probably also am that, yes. You don't believe that we are in any way special as human beings. <laughs> wait, wait, what? I think you might have misunderstood what an atheist is. It's not a position on the specialness of humans. I mean, considering how many atheists also call themselves humanists, which is basically taking humans as the basis of moral philosophy, it seems to me that quite a few atheists think humans are special. And that's not even including some forms of religious atheists who think that there's some supernatural significance to us. I'm not one of those, of course, but for my part, I do consider us special. There are a lot of ways in which we're a very remarkable species. We're certainly notable. And of course, to each other, we're extremely special. In that regard, for the most part, nothing else even comes close. So already I'm confused, but maybe you'll clarify and narrow the sense in which you mean this. You don't believe we were created by some supernatural being? No, but that has nothing to do with whether we consider ourselves special. At best, if you believed that kind of thing, you may or may not take that as a reason to consider yourself special. And I want to emphasize a reason. People can have different reasons for their opinions. You don't believe there's any real purpose to us being here? By which I think you mean that we don't believe that we exist to serve somebody else's purpose. Like some other entity put us here to serve its purpose, and for some reason people take that as imbuing humans with some sort of inherent specialness, but atheists don't do that because we don't think somebody with its own agenda put us here. Well, there are plenty of ways I could imagine humans being put on Earth to serve someone else's purpose, and that someone else not being a god, and thus being an entirely atheistic situation. But for my part, and the part of probably most of my viewers, yeah, that part I don't think is true. And again, that has no impact on my perception of humanity as special. You're saying these things in secret implying that they're inextricably linked. That if you don't believe this, then you don't believe that, but that's not true. These are separate ideas, and you can accept one and not the other. We are just here by chance. I always find that framing misleading, but yeah, it could have gone another way, so ultimately, sure. Chance as a description kind of works, it's just... Usually the people I've responded to in videos use that term to intentionally oversimplify. You know, so they can make some argument about a series of dice rolls and... One in ten with a trillion zeros after it, probability, that kind of stuff. You know, hitting on some predefined outcome by chance. Not saying you're doing that, I don't think you're doing that. Just always raises my hackles when I hear that word in this context. Of evolution that has taken place on this particular rock in the cosmos. We accept that we're on a planet, and we're the product of evolution, and therefore we don't see ourselves as special? What? Also, not all atheists believe in evolution. Believe it or not, atheism is older than the concept of evolution. We're just a tiny little piece of nothing in the universe, essentially. From one perspective, sure. In terms of size and stuff, yeah. But you could hand me a rock the size of the universe, and you could hand me a human the size of myself, and ask me which one I think is more important and special, and I'm gonna pick the human every time. And I don't give a shit what the rock the size of the universe does or doesn't think about it. It's a rock. It doesn't matter. What matters is what 
what other people think. I'm a human. This is my species. This is where I belong. These are the entities that matter most to me, even if they're smaller than a planet or a galaxy or the universe. I don't value things by size. Now, the problem with that is that while you believe that as an atheist... I don't. You're completely full of shit. Have you ever spoken to an atheist, just as a person? Not arguing in the comments section, I mean like across a table, over a meal, just talking about stuff, what's important, what matters to them, how they see the world. It seems like you haven't. You also believe at the same time... Oh, here we go, gonna find out more stuff we believe. That despite us being little pieces of nothing that are here by chance and have no real purpose, we are also so smart that we've more or less managed to figure out the universe. And how it began. Uh, honestly, I don't really think so. It's extremely subject to change at this point. It's a start, sure, but we're not really there yet. There are huge chunks of physics that become mathematically incompatible with each other towards the start of the universe. That's not a thorough understanding. Obviously, no shade whatsoever intended towards physicists. They're doing great work. It's just these kind of questions take a long time to solve if they're really solvable with any sort of finality at all. It is among the toughest of nuts. I don't blame you for taking some time to get it completely open. But I do think it's partially cracked. I mean, for all the stuff that we don't understand, there's also a lot that we do. We, of course, being humanity. It's far from perfect, and it's far from complete, but it's still pretty impressive so far. I'd like to point out that the existence of other galaxies was only demonstrated about a hundred years ago. That's nothing. And the amount of scientific progress that's been made since that point is incredible. But really, to me, that's not the interesting part of what you said. Let's go back and listen to it once more just to refresh the memory. That despite us being little pieces of nothing that are here by chance and have no real purpose, we are also so smart that we've more or less managed to figure out the universe and how it began. So the implication appears to be that if you're not placed somewhere for the purpose of serving someone else's agenda, and if you're small, and if you're the product of evolutionary processes, which is what you're using the word chance to mean at this point, which I still don't like, then you can't be smart. You can't figure out things about the natural world. Why? I don't see any hint of you giving a reason for this. You're just kind of saying it. Does increased or decreased size inherently imply greater intelligence? No. Does a difference in the manner of the origin of a species imply greater or lesser intelligence? No. Does the agenda or lack thereof behind the existence of a species imply greater or lesser intelligence? No. At least not just on the face of it. You would have to actually argue for that, and you don't appear to. As far as I can tell, and in this video you give me no reason to think otherwise, there is no incompatibility between these three statements. 1. Humans are small compared to the entire universe. 2. Humans are evolved. 3. Humans are intelligent. If there's any inconsistency there, I'm not seeing it. But here you are just kind of saying it as if it's obvious. Most atheists will have a general idea, or they'll think they have a general idea, of pretty much what happened with the universe. You know, this many billion years ago, this happened, that's why we have the universe. Okay, I mean, I don't know how common that really is. I know it's a thing. Personally, I find the whole thing extremely hard to wrap my head around. Even coming very close to understanding the current explanations for that is really difficult because you have to know so many different things. Pretty advanced things. And I'm not talking about expansion, even though that part has its complications too. A lot of the stuff like the redshift and the cosmic microwave background and the size of the observable universe are kind of graspable. Expansion, relatively speaking, is pretty simple. But it seems to me that once you start talking about what happened before those first moments of expansion, if that even means anything, things get kind of nasty kind of fast. And I'm man enough to admit that I don't have an understanding of that basically at all. As far as I'm concerned, that's a big question mark. Which, of course, is why I don't jam God in there. Because question marks are not invitations to just insert whatever you feel like. Sure, you can draw sea monsters all over the map past a certain point, but that doesn't mean there's sea monsters there, you just drew them on the map. So even though we're really nothing, we are a product of the universe, according to the atheist, we're also so grandiose and smart that we're kind of almost outside the universe looking in. 
saying, oh, yeah, this is pretty much what happened here. Sounds like a bit of projection. I mean, that's literally what religious people do with their god. I'm nothing, I'm scum, I'm so insignificant compared to god, but let me set up this whole religion and tell you everything about it. Which, by the way, I don't necessarily think is a problem. You're the one that thinks it's a problem. Now, again, we have these assertions about when a species is able to be smart. If you're small compared to the universe, you can't be smart. And if you're a product of the universe, you can't be smart. And observing the natural world to try to understand the origin of the universe is making yourself grandiose and putting yourself outside the universe like you're outside looking in, saying, oh yes, that's pretty much what happened here. No, that's not what's happening. That is not what science is. Science is a pursuit of humans very much within the universe. In fact, most of the difficulty of it is that we are within the universe. We're not so grandiose. We can't go outside and look down on it. The only perspective we have on it is our own, from here inside it. And I don't only mean that in terms of our actual position within the universe, but also the nature of our perception, the way we think about things naturally, the ways in which we find things easy to interpret and the ways in which we don't. Not only are we very firmly within the universe, we're also very firmly inclined to interpret it in certain ways which are useful for our survival. And this is a big part of what makes this problem so difficult. If we were able to just step outside of both our perception and the universe and look at this problem from the point of view of a complete outsider, it would probably be much easier, but we don't have that luxury. Now, we could use the religious strategy and just make up an outsider and say, yeah, that guy sees it all, he knows what's up. But see, the problem is the people who are involved in attempting to understand the universe scientifically actually want to be right. So just making stuff up and then asserting it's true because they said so doesn't work. The limitations of humanity have to be accepted and worked with. The limitations imposed by our position within reality also have to be accepted and worked with. And of course, worked around if possible. And I use the word work very deliberately because it's real work. A lot of it. If you want to be right, you can't make up answers based on feelings, or appeals to consequence, or there's a gap, I can put whatever I want there. It doesn't work like that. If the word chance applies well to anything, it's to the probability of actually being right if you do that. You stand a chance, but wow are your chances ever slim. Atheism, I began to realize, rested on a less than satisfactory evidential basis. The arguments that had once seemed bold, decisive, and conclusive increasingly turned out to be circular, tentative, and uncertain. Alistair McGrath. Okay, I gotta admit I have no idea how that links up to anything you've said so far. It seems like you just stuck some random quote about atheism from a religious guy in here for no reason, because it doesn't even apply to the topic we've been talking about up to this point. So I guess there's nothing worth saying about it. What an odd video so far. As well as that, there's the arrogance that uh, stems from, despite us just being one of many creatures on this planet, um, the human being with his or her five senses can't seem to sense God. I can either see God, hear God, feel God, touch God, or taste God. Therefore, there is no God. I hear that argument from the religious all the time, put forth as something that atheists say all the time. But in my experience, it's really, really rare that atheists actually say that. I have seen it, though, so I can't say they don't say it. I'll give you that it happens. I just don't think it's one of the main arguments you're going to see. But your interpretation of why that's arrogant is really interesting. It's arrogant because people say that despite humans being only one of the many organisms on this planet. Like as if expecting to literally see God with your eyes becomes less arrogant if there are less species on the planet and more arrogant if there are more species on the planet. So if there were only five species on the planet, it would be much less arrogant. Probably almost not even arrogant at all. You keep doing this thing where you take two different concepts and you put them together and you act like they're causally linked to each other, despite the fact that they appear to have no link to each other. Whether God is perceptible with human sight or hearing, or any other sense, doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the species population of Earth, but apparently it does in your head. Now that sounds arrogant because you're essentially saying that us, again according to the atheist, tiny little piece of nothing in the universe, on this particular rock in the cosmos, if we can't sense God with our five senses, there can be no God. There it is again, the physical size of humans being linked to something seemingly mostly unrelated, like our abilities of perception. It feels like you're tossing a bunch of ingredients into a bowl that are supposed to dissolve into one coherent mass by the end, but none of them do. It's just like a bunch of rocks and wood chips. <laughs> 
And so you mix it up and then you spoon it out and it's just a bunch of rocks and wood chips still. None of it dissolves into each other. It doesn't blend together. It doesn't even stick together. It just falls off your spoon. That's what it feels like. But look, man, if I'm going to believe in God, I'm not just going to do it because you tell me to. I'm not just going to do it for no reason. I got to have some kind of a reason. Now, I understand you're telling me your God is not perceivable with the five human senses. You can't smell God. Okay, fine. That's where the various arguments come in, either inferences from scientific understanding or just pure logical arguments. The problem is none of those hold up when I look at them. I don't expect to physically see or feel or taste God. I expect that if what you believe is so obviously true, that there would be some way for me to actually discern that it is in fact true. It's not arrogance on the part of atheists to expect some reason to believe the theistic claims. It's arrogance on the part of theists to expect atheists to believe their claims based on nothing. If theists really have the ultimate answers to everything in reality, but everything they present to back it up falls apart under scrutiny, what do you expect me to think? After the first time, the tenth time, the hundredth time, what do you expect me to do? Keep giving you the benefit of the doubt? Just believe you by default? No, I believe you're full of shit. If you claim to have all the answers, but you can't back any of it up, not only do I not believe you, which is what most people who use the term atheist for themselves are using it to mean, I also believe your idea is probably wrong. Because it seems like something you just believe because you want to, and then you try to come up with post hoc reasons to justify it, and every single one of them falls apart. That's not what people have to do when their ideas are solid reflections of reality. Truth does not require that. Now, does this mean there can't be a god? Does it mean you can't be right? No. There's a chance. It's just incredibly minuscule because you're believing something with no good reasons. And not just something, but something vastly beyond anything we've observed or understand. Something beyond the universe itself, infinitely greater than the universe itself. And this again is why I say it's a bit of projection when you accuse atheists of thinking they're the ones who are so grandiose and smart and seeing beyond the universe. I mean, that's exactly what you claim to do. And yet, unlike scientists who attempt to use what they understand to come to some kind of idea about the origin of the universe, hopefully, you just assert you already know it because of your religion. You say, oh, you stupid scientists actually working to find an answer. I already have all the answers about everything inside and outside the universe. I'm so grand. I'm so smart. I'm so high above you that I have it all. And then people ask how you know it, how you are so grand and knowledgeable. And I haven't heard your arguments in particular, but every argument I've heard from some supremely confident theist resulted in them falling flat on their face. Fallacies, wishful thinking, selective blindness, convenient misinterpretation, the list goes on and on and on. Not exactly the sort of thing that inspires confidence in you being correct. In fact, quite the opposite. It inspires a great deal of confidence in my position that, more likely than not, you're not correct. Why would we assume that our five senses are the only senses that any being in this universe can sense? Nobody does that. I mean, humans already have more than five senses, and there are organisms on this planet with senses senses we don't have. What are you talking about? We know even that on this earth, in this world, there are things that we don't pick up, but they still exist. Yes, there are things that we don't perceive, and there are things that we do perceive now that we did not perceive in the past. We're aware that there are things that we don't perceive. Nobody disagrees with you on this. And that's why this argument that if I can't perceive God with my five senses, he can't be real, is usually not an actual atheist argument, but instead a straw man atheist argument that theists love to bring up. The only people who make an argument like this seriously are dumbasses precisely because of what you just said. Now, if somebody made that argument to you, I'll agree with you, it's not good. But this video is called The Hypocrisy of Atheists, and this entire time you've been talking about atheists in general as a group. And you're talking about it as if atheists in general will find it a novel idea that the human senses don't detect everything that exists. Yet yeah, we know. We know, for instance, that there are sound frequencies that we do not hear, but a dog hears it, and we see how the dog reacts when that sound frequency is being played, but we don't hear that sound frequency. Uh-huh. 
And in that case, that's a real thing that we've managed to detect and explain. On the other hand, it's also clear that cats see ghosts. Quite regularly, my cat will suddenly be terrified. Wide pupils clearly looking at something standing in the middle of the room. And then he'll run away in fear. Now that's something we can't detect with our five senses, but clearly there's something there that the cat is detecting. Therefore, there's a ghost in the middle of the room. And the evidence for this is that the high-pitched sounds dogs react to are real. QED, what more do you want? We cannot detect it but we know it exists because of how the dog reacts. We cannot detect ghosts, but we know they exist because of how the cats react. Okay, now how do we distinguish between these two very similar claims? How do we decide if neither of them are true, or both of them are true, or just one is true, and if so, which one? Is there a way we can do that? Do we care to? Or do we just want to believe in high-frequency sound waves and ghosts? Because that's an option, I just think it's a really shit one, and I'm not going to take part in it. Now if you really wanted to, you could then maybe apply that even to Catholicism and say, I'm a Catholic, I've never seen the Virgin Mary, but there are numerous people who have had apparitions of the Virgin Mary, and according to their story, that would mean that the Virgin Mary is appearing. Now, of course, someone who's an atheist could say, well, I don't believe those stories, fair enough. But that would mean you kind of trust the dog more than you trust the person. And that's fine, you can do that. You might not trust people. Okay, the dog didn't tell me a story. The dog reacted to a sound. If I choose to believe that something particular is happening that the dog is reacting to, that's on me, not the dog. Same with the cat ghost. The cat didn't tell me he's seeing a ghost. He's just being a dumbass. If I want to make up a story about a ghost, that's my problem. I honestly cannot believe that you tried to turn this into a character issue about whether you trust people or not, as opposed to a question about the evidence. Look, do you want me to start parading stories in front of you of people telling you with absolute confidence that they've seen something that you don't believe in, as a Catholic? Because I can. I would barely even have to go looking for it. Just with the channels I'm already subscribed to, I could just go through all their videos and cut out probably tens of thousands of clips that would serve that function. Just because someone says they saw something doesn't mean it's true. If it did, this world would be a hell of a lot weirder than you're giving it credit for, and it would not be anything like what the Catholics think it is. If you get your head out of your ass and think about it for one second, you'll agree with me that it's probably not a good idea to open this can of worms. This is probably not the sort of argument you want supporting your position unless you intend to put yourself on the exact same footing as the Bigfoot people, the alien abduction people, the machine elf people, the Muhammad split the moon people, the ghost people, whatever other people. Surely you believe all those and every other wild thing anyone's ever said in all of human history that they saw, right? Or do you not trust people? Hmm? Um, but that is another issue. It's this idea that if we can't figure it out, it can't be there. No, I'm pretty sure there's lots of stuff that's true that we have not figured out and quite possibly never will. But you see, because we can't figure it out, I'm not going to assert what it is. Do you see how that works? The gap remains a gap. I want to be right, so if I don't know, the answer is I don't know, it's not whatever I want. Your entire approach to figuring out what's true shows a complete lack of concern for what's actually true. Your method appears to suck. I remember how frustrated I became when, as a young atheist, I examined specimens under the microscope. I would often walk away and try to convince myself that I was not seeing examples of extraordinary design, but merely the product of some random unexplained mutations. Dr. Rick Oliver. And you have a closing quotation mark, but no opening one. Interesting stylistic choice. I just noticed you had the same thing on the previous slide. You closed the quotation, but you never opened it. Except that time you put the period inside the closing quotation mark, but this time time you put it outside of it. Very interesting choices. But anyway, what you got here is your basic bog standard God of the Gaps design argument thing. And again, the quotation appears to have nothing to do with what we've been talking about up to this point. Unless, I mean, wait a second, what the quote's basically saying is, we can't figure it out, so it must be God. And this came up immediately after you complaining that you think atheists say, if we can't figure it out, it can't be there. Are you criticizing yourself? Are you pointing out that if this is an issue for atheists, then it's equally as much, if not more, an issue for theists, because a huge percentage of their arguments revolve around, we can't explain that, therefore God. Or as you said earlier, we can't perceive that, therefore God. Yeah, that's the actual function this quotation is serving in your video. I don't think it's the intended one. I think it's dishonest. Well, I think it's dishonest that you accuse atheists of having a problem because apparently we say, we can't explain that, therefore no God. And then you show a quote in support of your position. That's a guy that you seem to agree with saying, I can't explain that 
that therefore, yes, God. Actually, is it dishonest or is it more honest because you're just openly displaying your hypocrisy? You're not hiding it, you had to go out of your way to type up that quotation and put it in there and edit the video for it just to show everyone that you do exactly what you accuse others of doing. You know what? Maybe it's not dishonest. Maybe that's somewhat admirable. I think if an atheist was honest, he would be an agnostic. I think if an atheist was really a person of science, if an atheist really did think, okay, I only believe things if they can scientifically be proven and figured out. I don't think that. That's stupid. That would require me to throw out all of math and logic. How do you come up with these straw men? I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. It's just so stupid. Then he could not be an atheist. Uh, yeah, he could. If somebody only relied on the scientific method, it would be very, very easy to be an atheist. He wouldn't even have to do any of the science or read any of the science. He'd just say like, okay, you want me to believe this thing? Well, then get out of here and do some research. Come back with some kind of experiment. Show me. Otherwise, you're full of shit. But again, that's not what I do, and it's not what most people do. I don't think I've ever met a person who does that. There are questions where the scientific method is relevant, and there are questions where it's not. Again, these straw men of yours, it's baffling. I don't understand where you get them from. Are you making them up yourself? Are your Catholic friends telling them to you? Like, what is it? Like, what's gone wrong here that you think this is what an atheist is? Because there is no scientific way to to prove that there is no god. Okay, is there a scientific way to prove there is one? If not, is there any way? I don't need it proven either, I just want you to tip the needle past the 50% mark of whether it's more likely than not. You know, 51 to 49 is fine. I want to be clear, right now that needle's not at zero. But it's also not near 50. It's somewhere down in the, this is probably bullshit zone. But it can be closer to 50%. In fact, it can be above it, way above it. That's totally possible. It's just waiting for the right input that I've never, ever heard. Doesn't have to be scientific. Could just be a logical argument or, you know, pick whatever you want. I don't know what it'll be, but I mean, you believe the thing. You must have good arguments. Although, I mean, apparently some of your arguments include people say they saw the Virgin Mary and you have to believe them because you also believe dogs hear high frequency sound and if you don't believe them that just means you don't trust people more than dogs and so if you don't believe that person in particular then you're saying arrogantly that if we can't figure it out it can't be there despite the dogs hearing sounds thing y you said that right afterwards I just realized. Now, that's not about whether we can figure something out, that's about whether we believe testimonial evidence about supernatural phenomena on a cherry-picked preferential basis. Uh, never mind. God, this hurts my head. He could be an agnostic and say, I don't think we've found any evidence for there being a god. Plenty of atheists would also characterize themselves as agnostics. Argue about definitions, I don't care. But let me ask you about this evidence thing. If you haven't found evidence, but you didn't really expect to find any, maybe that's not a problem. But what if there's a bunch of evidence that you would expect to find? In fact, evidence that people tell you actually is real and is all over the place. But then every time you look for that evidence in the places where you expect it to be, it's not there. And every time you look at the evidence where people claim it is, it's not there. People say, I know God is real. I believe in God because of this evidence. And then you look at it and it's just like a dog turd on the bottom of someone's shoe. I'm sorry, but at some point I'm going to say, look, it's starting to seem more likely than not that you're probably just not right. You have an idea that you wish were true and that you want me to believe is true, but you've got nothing and you should have everything. The claims you're making are so insanely extreme, they imply a near total understanding of reality on your part, but you appear to have nothing to show me. All your arrogance, all your bluster, all your confidence appears to be based on nothing at all. And it's not just you, individually, it's every single time that I've been told this stuff by anyone in my entire life. They present nothing compelling, ever when what they promise is something more compelling than anything else I'll ever hear. At a certain point, how can you possibly expect that I'll do anything other than laugh? How can you expect that I'll keep on saying, well, I just don't believe there's a god, but, you know, I don't believe there's not one. Theists have had every opportunity for years and years and years to show me anything that would qualify as even a little bit of a good reason to believe. And I've been open to it. I've looked at the best they come at me with. I've listened carefully, considered it, and they failed utterly, miserably, 
every time. You claim to hold all the secrets of reality, but you have nothing to back it up. This is what fantasy looks like. It's what it looks like in every other circumstance, which you and I probably both agree are fantasy. What else at this point could I reasonably consider it to be? At this point, the only way you would be right is by pure dumb luck. And what are the chances of that? Making up something like this and having it match reality just by chance. Not high. But again, obviously, that's not me saying I'm certain about that. Belief is just that 51% on the needle. It's just thinking it seems more likely than not that it's this way. It's not absolute certainty. It's not I'll never change my mind. It's not I can't be convinced. It's this is how it appears based on what I've seen so far. And based on what I've seen so far, your religion appears to have fuck all evidence when it should have all the evidence. Do better, and I'll change my mind. Because if this thing exists, I want to know. I just don't think it does. In fact, I think it doesn't. And I think I'm very justified in tentatively, conditionally, holding that position. I think it's more likely true than the alternative. I don't think I'm in error, but if I am, I want to err on the side of what I think is more likely true. So make me think that your thing is more likely true. Tell me more about sightings of the Virgin Mary. I'm sure that'll make all the difference. I don't think we've found any evidence for there being a god, and until we do I won't believe in one, but I'm not saying that there certainly isn't one, I'm just saying at the moment I don't believe because I don't think we have any evidence to support it. Right, I believe there's no god, and I'm not saying there certainly isn't one, I'm just saying I would expect there to be much better evidence than you have, which can be presented pretty easily if this god's existence is really so obvious and compelling, and there isn't. And therefore, frankly, I don't have much choice other than to say, I think it's more likely not true that your god exists than true. I think it's more likely a product of religious people's minds than it is a feature of reality. Again, are you strawmanning atheists as having certainty that God does not exist? Is there one fucking thing you think about atheists that you didn't just make up? I've seen strawman before, but the level of strawman in this video is unbelievable. Just like hundreds of years ago, there are things we couldn't do that we can do scientifically now. Who knows if in a few hundred years we might be able to have some discovery where we can figure out if there's a God. That might be the atheist's way of thinking. Yeah. Sure, that's my way of thinking. If you get some kind of evidence later, come to me later. Why are you even talking to me right now? If you bring your homework to me in a few hundred years, I'll mark it. But if you just insist that you did your homework and that I'll know it's true in a few hundred years, I'm gonna give you an F. I'm nice, I'll give you an unlimited extension. Come to me whenever that homework's done and I'll change your grade. But sorry, right now you're still getting an F. We can figure out if there's a god in a few hundred years or if there isn't one because we'll advance so much. Again, I think that kind of goes against the idea that we're nothing, really, in the universe, just a tiny nothing. But the atheist may think that way. Again, with this idea that your physical size determines what you are and are not able to figure out about the universe. Not your methods, not your reasoning, just if you're bigger, then you can know more stuff, and if you're smaller, then you can know less stuff. And apparently at our size, we can't know any stuff. Or maybe we can know some stuff, but like only on our own planet, or I, I don't know. It's a very weird assertion. I can't say I've heard this one before. Does this apply to God too? His ability to understand stuff is based on his physical size. So then, uh, if God went on a diet... Um, so that's it. I, I mean, I have numerous uh, arguments against atheism, mostly to do with the belief. I think a lot of atheists, when they become atheists, and feel free to challenge me on this, they do so because they look at the belief system in God, or they'll look at religions, and they'll think, I reject that. That doesn't sound true. That sounds like nonsense. And so therefore, by default, I'm an atheist. Uh, if they stop believing in the god, then by default, they're an atheist. Yeah, at least by the soft definition. That would be what the words mean. I don't think a lot of atheists look deep enough into what atheism actually believes. Because if you actually dive deep into what atheism believes, well, that really is a great leap of faith to believe that. Okay, atheism doesn't believe anything. Atheism is not a person, it's a position on a claim. Positions don't have beliefs, but okay. Atheists, on the relevant topic, either don't believe the claim that God exists, in which case there's no belief implicit there. That's the weak definition.
or believe God does not exist. That would be the strong definition. No other beliefs are involved. Questions of certainty also are not involved. Between these two definitions, you have an enormous range of people. People who are firmly convinced there is no God, people who really have no opinion at all, naturalists, supernaturalists, religious people, irreligious people, anti-religious people, people who think life ends at death and people who think it goes on after death, whether as a ghost or a reincarnated spirit or an afterlife, Life, people who think we live in a simulation in a computer. It goes on and on and on like that. So the question is, when you say what atheism believes, what are you talking about? I wasn't aware there was such a thing as what atheism believes. Apparently a bunch of these people are just not proper atheists. Is there an atheist Bible I can read? Because I sure as hell wasn't aware of that. I am curious what you find to be such a stretch, though. I mean, it seems like basically your idea of what atheism believes is evolution, Big Bang, uh, the universe is big and people aren't that big. Something there you apparently find hard to believe, but you don't specify what it is. But I'll talk about that in another video. Oh, never mind then. This one was specifically just about this idea of we're nothing, not important, no purpose, and yet we're so great that we've figured out almost everything. Okay, so this video was about atheists think one thing is true, and yet also think this completely unrelated other thing is true. How can that happen? You can't believe two things at the same time. Compatible? What's that mean? Now there are some atheists who will say, look, we, one thing we know is that we know so little. One thing that science shows is how little we know, and the fact that things are constantly being discovered that we didn't know. Uh-huh, which goes against your entire characterization of what atheists are like up to this point. Oh, and we know now. That shows how little we probably still know and how much there is out there that we still don't know. Yeah, now this is better. I wish you'd chosen this as your inaccurate, broad, general characterization of all atheists from the start. Right? <sighs> sure. But again, that would mean you should really be an atheist because then you're admitting to not having anywhere near enough knowledge to be able to figure out if there is a god who created all of this. That's precisely the reason to be an atheist. I think I've covered all that adequately already, so I'll just move on. Oh, but that's that. Look, folks, if you are an atheist and you're watching this video and you want to retort what I'm saying, you want to respond in the comments, please do so. Please be civil. I think I've been pretty civil. More civil than was deserved at points, in my opinion, considering all the lying and straw men and putting ideas in other people's heads. Yeah. It can be frustrating, but I got through it with a decent amount of politeness. Please don't be like those atheists who, you know, those Christopher Hitchens fans who, uh, they're just mean and horrible and nasty and they mock people and they don't really have any argument, but they just like to be nasty. You've spent this whole video outright lying about what other people think and do. Did you ever think that if people are nasty to you, maybe sometimes you're a little bit at fault? I mean, come on, man, this whole video is designed to smear people you don't like based on total nonsense you made up. Expect pushback. Don't be naive. You can't say a bunch of dickhead straw man nonsense about people on the internet and then go, Yeah, don't be mean to me. Why are you guys being so mean? <laughs> don't start it then. Look, I don't think you're totally a dick or anything. You're probably cool. You don't seem like the nastiest type out there. And audience, please don't go over and bother him, okay? I mean it. Come on. I'm just saying a little bit of self-reflection would not go amiss in this case. If you're a civilized person and you want to give a response to what I've said, please do. I shall read it and I might respond. Read it? Oh no, I think I done goofed. All right, well, that's about all I have to say about that, I guess. Thanks for watching. If you would, before you go, please give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. If you like the channel, please do consider supporting even a small amount, a couple bucks a month, whatever, helps a huge amount. And to all of my supporters who've already made that choice, thank you so much. For early access, sign up to the email list, list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.